time to upgrade to a bigger tailwheel. Hey guys, what is up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com and today we are talking tailwheels. Exactly how big of a tailwheel do you need for your airplane? Well, for starters here, if you don't fly a tailwheel airplane, then you probably don't need a tailwheel. If you need a tailwheel on your non-tailwheel airplane, you might be dragging your tail a little bit too much there. But all that being said, if you don't fly a tailwheel airplane, you should at least go get your tailwheel endorsement. Tons of fun, tons of places open up when you do have a tailwheel aircraft, like all these places we've been going to with our Bearhawk. And this is the old tailwheel off of our Bearhawk that has now been upgraded to a slightly bigger tailwheel because this little guy wasn't quite up to the task here in Alaska. So let's talk differences between this, well, I won't call it a little guy, I'll call it a medium sized guy with kind of a narrow tire and the large guy we have there on the Bearhawk now. I think it goes without saying that tailwheels take a ton of abuse. This particular one you can see, lots of gravel damage there or just gravel bouncing off of it and kind of chewing through the paint. Uh, tailwheels are gonna take a lot of abuse on your airplane and we don't want them to take any more abuse than they already have to. So this little guy here, when we were going through Utah, he was doing okay on some of those backcountry strips, a little bit softer sand, but no problem, still doing all right. On pavement, on harder grass, any harder surface or mostly hard surface, even a, a soft surface, but not really that soft, right? You know, it was doing just fine. And a lot of times in the lower 48 or when you're first getting into flight training, you think soft field is anything that's grass. Well, most grass fields are actually pretty hard, uh, except for springtime, maybe up north and stuff. Most grass fields are more in the harder category, right? So when we talk soft field, we're talking like when we landed here in Cordova, and the sandbar was really soft, very sandy, and this tailwheel dug in really good. Um, this was the tailwheel we were using there, and I'm starting to think, oh man, that's a lot of stress and strain on the tail, not just the tailwheel, but also the spring and the whole tail assembly back there. We don't wanna be stressing out quite that much. And now there's a lot to think about too when you're landing, right? So not only do I land, then I wanna pin my tail to keep the airplane from nosing over, but now I'm saying, oh, well now I gotta get the stick forward and maybe apply a little bit heavier brakes, try to make the tail a little lighter because I can feel it digging in back there. I can feel it really biting and I know it's damaging the tail back there or potentially gonna damage the tail. Definitely don't wanna rip it off. And that's just a lot more to think about on landing, you know, right? On that landing rollout, we don't need all that extra stuff. So we upgrade and what does that upgrade do for you? Well, obviously it makes the tail a little bit higher, which lowers your angle of attack when you are in that three point attitude. What does that mean? Well, it's easier to touch tail first on those three point landings, but it also means it's going to lengthen your takeoff roll ever so slightly. It's also a little bit heavier than this guy. So that added a little bit of weight to the very back of the airplane, about two, three pounds, not a big deal. And actually good for us because the Bearhawk was already a little bit nose heavy with just me in there and no baggage in the back. So for those stole competitions, I was putting 30 plus pounds of lead back in the tail there, trying to make that tail heavier. Could have used even more lead because, hey, the airplane's designed to have a person sitting in the back seat, plus a bunch of camping gear and other stuff in the cargo compartment. So of course, when there's just one person in there, it's super nose heavy and you don't quite have enough elevator authority to really get a good three point attitude landing and you don't really want to get on the brakes too hard when you do land because you might pick that tail up. So having some weight back there, not a bad thing. So adding a heavier tailwheel to our airplane, that was a cool thing. It hurt us on the takeoff roll because, well, we don't get the same angle of attack that we used to. Is that really that big a deal? Well, not so much. The shortest takeoff we ever had was 96 feet, at least at one of those stole competitions. Now we're seeing that, well, this bigger tailwheel probably added about 25 to 40 feet, somewhere in that range to our takeoff roll. As much as I would love to lie to you and give you a specific number as to how much it added, well, there's absolutely no way to tell between different density altitudes, different little gusts of wind that you get on the nose, different days, different whatever. It's not a perfect science, somewhere between 25 and 40 feet is what it increased the takeoff roll by, right? So we have a little bit higher tail, a little bit lower angle of attack. How can we fix that? Well, we could put bigger tires on the airplane, which we might try doing here soon, because that would definitely get us back to where we were or even help us depending on how big those tires are. Now, what about where we wanna be using this big tail wheel and how it compares? Well, definitely the big tail wheel is not spraying sand to the sides like the little guy was. So little guy, spray and sand, almost like a rooster tail, kind of like its own wake of sand when we we're landing in some of these places and me constantly having to juggle between, uh, okay, we just touched down and pin the tail. Oh, we don't pin the tail. And, and just doing that whole monkey juggling thing. It's more work than I need to be doing at that particular time. And 
don't really want to be doing all that work. Also with the little guy, well in Cordova we we're kind of worried about taxing so we had a ton of weight in the airplane. I didn't want to take the weight out of the airplane to back taxi so we took a passenger out but now I still have a bunch of weight back there. So we tried carrying the tail. Uh, that was extremely tiring and very heavy. Um, and in that soft sand, really hard to push the airplane. And then I said, okay, well, we can try a tail light taxi. So not a tail up taxi because I'm not gonna stand here and pretend like I'm good enough to do the whole tail up taxi thing on soft sand with kind of hard tires. These Goodyear 26s are a little bit harder. So as you hit softer versus not so soft sand and little bumps there or whatever, you're constantly varying that brake pressure, varying the stick pressure and pretty much holding steady throttle there, adding some power to lift that tail up. So I did a tail light taxi, meaning some power, stick forward, and some brakes on, uh, but didn't want to try the full tail up taxi. And that's one reason why you see 35 inch tire airplanes, you know, these carbon cubs with big 35s on them and these little tiny tail wheels that look so goofy. You're like, hey, why do you have that? Well, because if you're really good at flying your airplane and you have a nice light tail back there, well, you can do the whole tail up taxi thing and even when you're off airport, then it doesn't matter, right? So the little tail wheel is not gonna sink in and get damaged because you can keep that tail light if that's what you're thinking about. It's an additional thing to think about. It's easier if you don't have to worry about it. And that's where we're at now with the bigger tail wheel. Now we're landing in these exact same spots that are nice and soft and it's not really an issue at all for us. We're not worried about it because I can just pin that tail when we land, apply some brakes, hold that stick full back like I'd like to, power to idle and just get that airplane slowed down without having to worry about, oh my gosh, am I ripping my tail off? Although we don't have that extra drag from that tail wheel digging in to help slow us down, but hey, you don't really need that much extra drag back there anyway. So what is the right tail wheel for you? Well, I can tell you I love pneumatic tail wheels or basically tail wheels with air in them. Those little super, super tiny ones like on RVs and stuff, they're great for low drag, but this isn't a 200 mile an hour airplane we're flying and if you're flying off airport, you're probably not flying a 200 mile per hour airplane either. So adding that bigger tail wheel on the Bearhawk, I don't know, it cost us a mile an hour in cruise speed, maybe, maybe nothing. Uh, it's, it's really not gonna slow you down a whole lot like it would going from that little teeny RV donut to the giant tail wheel. Would definitely slow down like an RV6 or something like that. Now, the pneumatic tail wheel just rides a lot better on pavement. This guy is great for pavement, great for any grass or even kind of hard beaches, gravel bars, all that. Was wonderful on this guy. Uh, just totally fine and better takeoff performance. But once you get into the super soft stuff, you need that wider load, that more surface area to distribute the weight of your tail. The Bearhawk tail, when you start putting weight into the back of the airplane, you put a passenger back there, your tail's gonna be over 200 pounds or the weight on your tail wheel is gonna be over 200 pounds. Think about how skinny this guy is compared to our new guy that's a little bit wider and also a little bit bigger overall. Back to which tail wheel is right for you? Well, it depends on where you wanna take your airplane and you can't say, well, I don't go to beaches that are that soft very often, so I'm just gonna run the small tail wheel because I don't go often. Well, you don't go often, like if you go once and it digs in and breaks off, that's bad, right? So if you're gonna go somewhere that you need a big tailwheel for, well, then you need a big tailwheel. If you're not going to those places, then it's totally fine. And a lot of gravel bars, a lot of beaches even, grass strips and so on, don't require big tailwheels. For example, this one, one of the first places we went when we upgraded our tailwheel, well, it's super tall grass, but I was not really impressed with my takeoff roll because A, super tall grass, lots of drag on those main gear tires, and the big tail wheel is not helping us. It's not super soft underneath the grass. It's plenty hard for this little guy to do just fine there, but that tall grass is creating a ton of drag and I wish I had a little bit more angle of attack to get that airplane off the ground sooner to break ground and then climb away. Keep in mind, once you break ground, the airplane's gonna climb away just as it always does, big tail wheel or not. So it doesn't matter that much. Going from a 100 foot takeoff roll to a 140 foot takeoff roll not the end of the world really in the real scheme of things. We typically limit ourselves to 600 feet as a minimum safe distance for operating. So we're typically not landing anywhere less than 600 feet unless we have some crazy reliable winds that we know are gonna be there for both the landing and the takeoff as well to get back out of there. The last thing we'll say about big tail wheels is keep in mind, bigger tail wheels a lot more prone to shimming than the little tail wheels of all sorts from all manufacturers. The more tire you put back there, the more likely it is to shimmy. And there's things you can do to reduce that, but only to an extent, all right? The smaller tail wheels tend not to shimmy quite as much. Uh, and they typically turn a little bit easier for taxing and for groundwork, especially on harder surfaces. On softer surfaces, the big tail wheel's great. So, be realistic about how soft the surfaces are that you are going to. Be realistic about your own skill and abilities of whether or not you can lighten up that tail when you're taxing and use those techniques, or if you need to just default to a bigger tailwheel like we did, which is a lot safer and easier. 
And whichever way you guys go with little tailwheel, medium sized tailwheel, big tailwheel, whatever it is, I highly recommend finding a good experienced CFI, take you out into the backcountry, get some backcountry flying in there, get away from the airport, whether you're in the lower 48 or up here in Alaska, it is so much fun to escape out into the wilderness, use your machine to take you to incredible places, both along the way that are just breathtaking, and once you get to these places, experience them, camp, have a ton of fun, enjoy the summer, guys, be safe, and if you cannot fly every day, fly 8 We will see y'all in the next one.